All right, I think we're live. Hi, everybody. So I wanted to pop in today because it's Friday and we're about to head out for a weekend. And my hubby and I are going out to a restaurant. We're going out to, we're actually going to a cruise. We're going to a party, a friend's birthday party, and all of that. And I am not in the least bit worried about my food. So if you worry about what can you eat on a candida diet, or are you ever going to be able to eat stuff again? I'm here to tell you yes. <laughs> Hi, everybody. I'm Ricky Heller. I'm a candida coach, and I help people learn to love their food, even on a candida diet, without feeling deprived, so that they can stop focusing so much on that food and go on to actually love their lives as well. And so um, that's what I want to talk about today, because I like I get a lot of questions about food. And I know that our focus in our society for sure, <clears throat> excuse me, is the food. And so I just want you to know, will you ever be able to eat in a restaurant again? Yes, of course. Will you ever be able to go to a party again? Yes. Will you ever be able to go to the beach again? Yes. Maybe you can't eat at a restaurant first and then go to the beach because my mom told me that will give you a stomach ache. <laughs> but all the things that you do in your life and that you want to do in your life, you can do them again. So for those of you who don't know my story, I've actually been following an anti-candida diet for 20 years now. And I wanted to talk a little bit about how things have changed and what foods I've brought back and what I eat now so that you can see how it is totally possible to live a full and happy life, even while following an anti-candida diet. And I'm just going to check uh, to make sure. So if you uh, please let me know, you can hear me just say yes in the comments if you can. So over the years, I've definitely brought back some foods into my diet. I say that I follow, I would say, a stage one type diet about 90% of the time. And then the other 10% of the time, I eat the foods that I've brought back in. And I'll, I can tell you what those are if you're interested. But I do think that's different for each person. And then the other 10% as well is when I do things like what we're going to do this weekend. And the best part of it is over this time that's gone on is that I am no longer afraid. I'm no longer afraid of food. And I think that's what um, really stands in the way for so many people, because I know that I'm always going to be able to find something I can eat. I know that the food's not going to be harmful to me. I know what I can and my body can and can't tolerate. And it just becomes so much easier over time. And it may be hard to believe at this stage, if certainly if you're at the beginning or if you've gone through it a few times before and you're finding it hard to go through things like social situations, it really does become easier. And I wanted to just talk about uh, a couple of things that may be um, helpful in terms of some thoughts around the food that can maybe help you to look forward and see where things can go for you. So. I don't see any comments and I just want to make sure that you guys can hear me. Well, I'm going to keep talking. I'm going to assume you can hear me. So the first thing that I think might be a little bit of a reassuring thought, if you want to think of it in that way, is that over time, your palate changes. So what I mean by this is the more you, you continue to eat the foods that are going to properly nourish your body and help you heal, the less you are going to even think about or crave those other foods. They're just not going to appeal to you anymore. And I, I think of the example when I was a little kid. So, you know, like maybe eight or 10 years old. Um, my sister and I on Saturday mornings would wake up early. My very favorite breakfast, which I would always make for myself because my, our mom would sleep in on the weekends, was crackers, like saltines with uh, slathered in peanut butter and uh, chocolate milk. Now, I love breakfast, but at this stage of the game, that certainly doesn't appeal to me anymore, right? And it's the same sort of idea, like if you think of a baby that, you know, babies love that pureed baby food, prune puree. Does that appeal to you today? No, it doesn't, right? So I think of this as the palate maturing, where you get to a stage where all of that sort of highly processed, chemical-laden, sugar, fat, salt that are designed to make you addicted to them, all of those foods will just no longer be that appealing to you 
because your palate's going to change over time. And your body is going to know that you are consuming foods that are actually good for you. And that makes a huge difference because you're going to start to want those foods and the other ones just won't appeal to you in the same way. Just like I have no interest in Captain Crunch cereal that I used to love as a kid anymore because my palate has changed. So your palate's going to change and that's going to just be a natural evolution that happens. And I think what happens too is your brain gets on board because consciously or not, as you're eating foods that support your health and you're starting to feel better and your body feels better, your brain understands that these are foods that are good for you. And so it begins to um, play into those cravings and desires. And you're going to start wanting the foods that are actually healthy. So that's the first thing. The second thing is um, once you're once your food becomes a true priority and your health becomes a true priority for you, you will stop naturally focusing on those other things. And what do I mean by this? You might be familiar with the concept of flow. There was a guy whose name I just love to say because it's like such a cool name. His name was Mihaly Csikszentmihalyi, I believe. <laughs> it's just the, the name was like this long on the book, book cover. Um, this guy created the concept of flow. And what that means is when you are so focused and concentrated on something that you kind of tune out the other, the rest of the world and you lose track of time. And most of us get into a flow state, like when we're working on a hobby that we love. So as an example, when I was much younger, I used to sew a lot of my own clothes and I loved sewing. I loved the intricate deep, like paying attention to the detail and working on the seams to make sure they were perfect because I'm so anal that way. And I remember I would sit sometimes in my apartment at my little singer sewing machine and I would start working on something and I'd pick up my eyes and it was like three hours later and I couldn't believe it. So if you've ever had that kind of experience where you're so focused on something, maybe you have a hobby, like you love to dance or you're learning a new language or something like that. Or even in a work context, you can think of maybe you've had these like intense meetings where you're brainstorming and you, you know, work an hour later than you thought you would or whatever. It's that idea where suddenly you start to tune out other things. And I think there's a very similar thing that happens with the food. You know, um, if you are driving your husband to the emergency room, no matter if it's raining and thunderstorming, you are not paying attention to anything else except how am I going to get there safely now, right? Um, or and as quickly as possible. And it's that kind of tunnel vision that you end up having with your food when you are really 100% committed to your own health and you are a priority in your own life. So what happens is you just don't notice those little extraneous details in the same way. If you're at a restaurant or you're at a party, you know, the Pringles or the pizza or the whatever it is that you cannot eat on a candida diet, those things don't register the same way they did before. They just don't. And so for me, I it's not that I'm lying and saying, oh, you know, I don't care about those foods. I really don't care about those foods. You get to a point where your health is more important to you and you've been eating this way long enough that it doesn't appeal to you because I know that's the food that made me sick in the first place. It's not in any way appealing to me. And, you know, to be clear, this is not a quick, like instantaneous kind of process. Like I said, I've been doing this 20 years. I don't think it takes 20 years to get that point to that point, but it does take time and it does take effort. And this is where having someone who can guide you or having a really good support system with people who are on the same journey as you is so, so helpful, right? Because that's how you gain the stamina, the motivation, the momentum to keep going and get to that point. But I think that's really important for people to understand that, you know, these things do not, it's not like a static thing. Like right now, when you're at the beginning of the, of your candida diet, or maybe you've fallen off the wagon and you're finding it so hard to stick with it, that is not something that's static and is never going to change because the more you do stick with it, the more it becomes natural. And the more you are really focused and motivated because your goal is bigger than the food. You are more important. Your health is more important than the food. You can get to a place where that food isn't important anymore. And that's when you really flip the switch and you start being able 
to actually enjoy everything else in life that isn't food. And think about it. Most of the things we enjoy the most in life, most of the things you're missing because you're dealing with candida, like spending time with your loved ones or those hobbies I just mentioned, those are not food related things. So that when you get to that point, that's when the world opens up for you. And that's when your life becomes one that you truly can enjoy again. So I hope that was helpful. I'm just going to take a quick look. I don't see any questions. While I'm while I'm, I'm telling you about uh, something that I would love for you to grab a free cookbook, um, please, if you have any comments or questions, put them below. And if you're watching the replay, hi, everybody who's watching the replay. Um, also, I come back, I look at these videos. So please do, if you don't leave a comment now and something occurs to you later, or you have some questions or whatever, just come back and put them down later. But as I said, I think it's a transition. We, we are, of course, naturally focused on food because that's the way we live. But once you can get beyond the food to something um, more, then that's when you can focus on everything else. So I want to help you sort of bridge that gap with a cookbook full of everybody's favorite foods. It's called Sweet Favorites. And actually, this book is a compilation of all the best dessert recipes from various sources, different cookbooks that I've put out, my Sweet Life private members club. These recipes have never been made public before. And I will say this cookbook is only going to be free for um, about a week until September. So you want to grab it now while it's free because it's going to be $10 after that. But this will show you some ideas of what kind of truly delicious and like guest worthy foods and desserts that you can have on an anti candida diet. So to grab the book, just go to rickyheller.com forward slash sweet favorites. That's all one word sweet favorites. And I'll put the link in somewhere in this uh, video. And it's got brownies, ice cream, chocolate chip cookies. Um, I'm trying to think what else blondies, a spice cake, whole bunch of stuff. Most of my readers, my Sweet Life members, and my favorite sweet recipes, we've got chocolate to spice to all kinds of things. So that'll give you a sense of the kinds of foods you truly can enjoy. And like I said, these are foods that your body will understand are supportive of your best health. And so that will help your brain to get on board with a candida diet overall. And once you have foods that satisfy all of those other triggers, it's really so much easier to go on and get back to living all the rest of your life. So I hope that was useful. If it was, go and grab that book and I will see you guys next time. Just taking a quick peek. I don't see any um, questions, but like I said, I'm always happy to come back and answer your questions if you have any for me later on. All right, everybody have a fabulous weekend. Go off and eat some of those yummy desserts and I will see you next time.